today's video I want to show you how my pumpkin patch and uh, squash bed are doing um, and I'm going to be checking for squash bugs and squash bug eggs and I'll explain to you how what my intentions are on how I am going to try to prevent them I know last year when I planted um, this full pumpkin patch last year it was incredible it was completely grown out just like how lush all of these are along here and in the back there but it was throughout the whole entire bed and then in a matter of a week or so I noticed the squash bugs just completely decimated them so I'm trying to be a little bit more proactive I did plant corn this year in the center here um, and see some deer back there that's why we have this orange fencing up one day we came out here on the back porch and we noticed a deer made its way right in through this little gateway but if you notice we put up a temporary fencing to try to keep the deer out and so far so good so I came in here and I noticed I flipped over some of the leaves and we already got some squash bug eggs. So what I plan to do with all of these is I plan on using some handy dandy duct tape and I am just going to try to get as many of them off as possible. I would smash them but I get kind of grossed out with that so we'll see how that goes. Um, if we get to the point where the squash bugs grow and develop into full adult squash bugs, um, I think I'm going to try some neem oil, but let me know in the comments below how you treat your squash bugs. But I am going to go ahead and start with trying to just get those eggs off of the plants and I'll just have to be diligent and come out here at least once a week um, to try to find that and I'll put a, um, a cycle showing the life cycle of the squash bugs and I need to research that to see how quickly they go from egg to actual baby squash bugs to full-grown squash bugs so I'll pop that on the screen as well so I can share that with everyone else who isn't familiar with that but in the meantime i'm going to get the tape ready and start getting those eggs off okay so all i did is i took the duct tape and i rolled it up and i am just going to flip the leaf over and let's see how well this works oh Oh, it comes off pretty easily. That's good. So I will continue doing this to get these eggs off of here. And I'll be right back. Okay, so you can see all the eggs so far I've collected. And some of them I actually did smash with my hand with the glove. Because I get grossed out by this with bare hands. But look at all those, those little babies. Some of them are still moving. Some of them hatch, they're all over, and I've only been on this plant and this plant. I haven't even touched any of those plants. I'm not so sure this is for me, doing the whole squash thing. Um, Let me know in the comments below if you have success with squash, any kind of squash, whether it be pumpkins or spaghetti squash or acorn squash or um, butternut, anything like that. Let me know what you do and how you do it, because this might possibly be my last year doing this. Okay, so I don't know how all this is going to turn out. But these probably up here at the front probably had the most eggs and some of them had already hatched. That's what I showed you with the first set of tape. The second set of tape. There weren't a whole lot on here. And I was looking at the squash on this side. 
on this side, which are my butternut and spaghetti squash. There were some eggs, but there weren't a whole lot. So I was trying to pass some of the stems through those holes to try to get them to climb up. I probably should have done more of an A-frame. Um, but again, let me know in the comments below, anybody who has experience with it. There were a few plants that are coming up over here that were acorn squash. And I tried planting Jack the Little pumpkins to try to climb up, to try to climb up this fencing. But it doesn't look like any of the Jack B. Littles have come up, so they may have been bad seeds. But down there, I see a few of the acorn squash coming up. And I have like some sunflowers planted back there, and there's a pumpkin patch back there. You can't really tell, but there's sunflowers back there and sunflowers over here. So we'll just have to see how it goes. Looks like I might have one sunflower that, a rogue seed right there. I planted a couple of sunflower seeds here and a couple right there and I'm going to have to get my little mantis out until till this area up where it's all grass right now or I need to throw cardboard down or something but back there there's some sunflowers. I did try to plant some marigolds too. I was hoping to do some companion planting. This year I just got a late start with this garden. A super late start so we'll just see how it turns out I have marigold planted there I have several sunflowers planted right through here and along here I have some sunflowers I know I tried to plant a nasturtium right there these were all really, really baby, baby plants that really didn't do well. My seedlings, like I said, I don't know if it was the medium that I used to start the seeds. They didn't do that great. But once I get them in the ground, they usually do really well. So these are all sunflowers here. And these are my really big pumpkins. I didn't really see too many of the eggs, squash bug eggs on these. Uh, I'm sure the eggs will be getting laid on the underside. I guess when I start seeing that, I'm gonna have to just come out with some um, neem oil or something. I try to do everything as organic as possible. And then there's another sunflower there and then a bunch of weeds. I'm begging for help. Anybody, any input of what I should do and if you're experienced what you do to help keep the squash bugs at bay. So today is July 16th. So it's been a little bit since I recorded that first part of the video. And you can see how enormous all of my plants are getting. The corn's doing great. This side is um, growing amazingly well. It also appears that uh, some of them are trailing up on the fence and through and some of it's just spreading on the ground so i already know what i need to do differently next time if i continue to grow squash is make sure they're more of an a-frame rather than um, a straight up vertical fencing so in light of the fact um, and i don't know if i explained before i had i have corn right here there's pumpkins behind it big pumpkins I have spaghetti squash and butternut squash along here. In this front part, I had corn throughout this whole section. This is a serrano pepper plant and there's a little baby serrano pepper plant right there. Um, I tried planting two different types of corn. One was in this section right here which didn't appear to be good seeds because none of it germinated. And then the corn back here is doing very well. It's growing as it should right now. Looks like I have a rogue tomato plant growing, which honestly, I might just go ahead and stake it up and let it grow. And I noticed there's another rogue tomato plant growing there and I'm probably going to do the same maybe, but I have a feeling that that squash is gonna just take over. 
So the last time I videoed, I was showing you the squash bugs and how I was removing the eggs. Oh my gosh. If you've never seen the baby squash bugs, that's what they look like. They look like little spiders. They got like these, this gray body, at least the squash bugs in our area with black legs. So I watched several videos about squash bugs and squash plants. And there was one channel that I was watching. If I can remember the name, I'll try to pop it in the description box below. But he was an older gentleman who lived down in either Louisiana or um, somewhere in one of the southern states. And he explained that people tend to think it's the squash bugs that decimate their squash plants. And he said that's not true. He said it's the vine borers that decimate the plants in such a short period of time. I was so focused on squash bugs that I didn't prepare my plants like I probably should have in how he described it, where he was wrapping it with aluminum foil at the base of the plant to try to prevent those um, vine borers from getting in. And he said the only way, if I remember correctly, of really killing them is you have to check on them on a regular basis and then spray um, like a neem oil on it when they were at a certain stage of life. Because once the egg is laid and that little vine borer bores down in after the egg hatches and it bores down in to the through the plant, it's a matter of maybe a week and it will decimate the plant. Um, apparently it do, does so much damage to the vine that it does not allow water to flow through. So after I watched that video, I came out here, of course these plants were a lot smaller than what they are now. Like I can't even walk through here at this point. There was still a little bit of a path when I came out here and I sprayed the heck out of the base um, like down where the soil may have been in case they overwintered because I did plant them in the same spot this year as I did last year. And I sprayed the base of it, but as he described, once it dries, it's no longer effective. You have to spray the bugs when they're at a certain stage and it has to be wet. Anywho, I still don't know what this year is going to bring in terms of the success or failure of my squash bed this year. Um, I don't know yet and I won't know until next year whether I decide to grow them again or I'm just possibly going to make this bed something else. Like now that I have all of this fencing, I might possibly um, grow more of my tomatoes or other plants that grow vertically since this is, structure has already been placed this year. And this side, I explained, I planted a corn squash and the Jack B. Little pumpkins. Um, none of the Jack B. Littles seem to be coming up. I did notice, and I can't tell if they're the really big pumpkins that are just growing and taking over over here. I think there were a couple of acorn squash coming up the last time I was out here, but I decided I didn't want to waste the space. So I did plant some pole beans down along the side and it looks like there might be a couple coming up and then I also planted some soybeans in this area up here since the corn didn't come up but I'm trying to see I might see one or two plants that are possibly coming up but I have a feeling this squash is probably going to just take over the area we'll see how it goes um, every year is an experimental year. I did plant some companion plants and one of which is the marigolds. They seem to be doing well. I know I planted some nasturtium. I'll walk around and see if I can see them growing. Um, I planted several sunflowers. 
there's some sunflowers here. Oh my gosh, looks like a tomatilla plant is growing here. I'll have to show you my tomatilla plant in my other garden and uh, I'll have to cook with it. Show you how I make the salsa verde. There's a sunflower plant. Oh my word, some of these leaves. These were like the giant pumpkins that I planted. Looks like Todd came by a mode and he hit some that was growing outside of the fencing. We probably can take this fencing off now that these have really taken off. Oh, here's a nasturtium that's growing pretty well. I started the nasturtium and marigolds in the house, in my grow room. There's a sunflower, here's a sunflower. This looks like a sunflower. And then we have the squash plants growing through the fencing, which I'm probably going to move that. That'll be hard to remove whenever we remove this fencing. Oh goodness. So some of it is growing kind of through the fencing, but most of it's trying to grow on the ground. And I see some, looks like the pumpkins back here. I see some that might be getting ready to flower. And I have a feeling seeing some yellowing leaves in through there. I don't know if you can see I can see some yellowing leaves, so I don't know. That might be a sign that the vine borers are possibly getting to my plants. But the corn, I got a late start on the corn, which not a big deal. Um, as I've mentioned before, I would be grateful to have corn to eat, but if I don't, I at least like it for um, decoration in the fall time. And behind the vertical trellis here, there is a bunch of weeds growing through. I should have gotten those under control, but we'll see what happens. Same on this side. Bunch of weeds on this side right here of the vertical fencing. Okay, so I guess time will tell. I feel like it's going to be what it is. As the old saying goes, it is what it is. And we'll just see how it turns out. This might be my last year growing pumpkins and other types of squash. We will see. And this just might end up being possibly a tomato or bean garden. We'll see. If you like this video, be sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to continue following me on this gardening journey and see any of the successes or failures, and I will share with you all of that, um, be sure to subscribe. Until next time, thank you for watching.